hello good afternoon good evening good morning or good night again wherever you are in the world good to see you here my name is Hans the storyteller Nordic and for the next 30 minutes we have the next level lecture for you with another new exciting subject last week we talked about coincidence what is coincidence things that happen in your life you say hey well that is a coincidence well there was a little bit more to say than it just a coincidence so we saw we learned that a coincidence is all about lining up your life with the big story of the universe and today we have another subject and that is called climbing your mountain and we're going to start in a few minutes minutes not before I give my introduction to you as you may be familiar to it is January 6th 2021 the year 2021 and I'm talking for my home country the Netherlands in Europe my name Hans the storyteller Nordic I have a career in aviation ending up being a pilot a captain on the big Boeings flying all over the world meeting a lot of people visiting a lot of cultures and hearing a lot of stories and now I'm a speaker coach, a brand ambassador, and I am a brand creator. And I also have a career as a storyteller, a theater maker. So the next 25 minutes, we're going to talk about climbing your mountain. And there's a warning and there's a sidestep. The warning is that what I tell you in these next level lectures, they may sound very far-fetched fantasy things out of this world not applicable to me what does it mind what does it care um, I'm busy with these subjects for about 30 years so bear with me because think twice about it there may be something inside you that is a, like a golden nugget and we also make side steps towards other subjects during this next le uh, level lecture Edmund Hillary, May 29, 1953. He is going to climb the Mount Everest. And he was asked, why, Mr. Hillary, why, why, why do you want to climb the mountain? And his famous answer was, well, I want to climb the highest peak in the world because it is there. This lecture is about reinventing, redesigning, reintroducing, uh, and re, uh, uh, re, excuse me, rediscovering your world. So Mr. Hillary said, well, I climbed the mountain because it's there. If you take that, that philosophy towards our life, your life as a human, we're going to talk about a few more subjects in regard to this. Um, the climbing the mountain and we all at least most of us we have this we have this this longing in our life to climb our mountain and you can climb a mountain physically which i did many years ago uh, rock climbing in the alps and you can climb the, your own mountain non-physically which i mean going for your goals making your dreams come true those kinds of things that is um, that's what we talk about now in climbing your mountain. So if you go back to mythology, then you will find a lot of stories about climbing mountains. And climbing a mountain, and I'll make the story short, in the beginning of climbing your mountain, say it's a circular mountain, you're climbing up, going up and up and up, going towards the summit. In the beginning, of climbing your mountain your physical or your non-physical mountain you may need you have help you get help and you go up years 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 days climbing 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 and then always the mythological stories tell that the last part of climbing your mountain you have to do it by yourself it's lonely at the top which they say so a sidestep mystical mysterious and mythology 
Now it's good to understand the re true the original meaning of words in any dialogue. And now we talk about mythology, mystery, and magical. Well, to start with the last one, um, magical. Magically, is, magical is something that per definition we cannot understand or per definition we cannot find. Mystery is something that we do not understand or, or haven't found yet and we can potentially find it or understand it. Like a mysterious man we haven't met or a mysterious person in a story we haven't met the person. So magical is impossible to understand. Mystically, it's hidden for us, it's behind the corner of something. And then mythology. Mythology is an old Greek word, and mythology means the road, road map, the road map, your road map for your life. And that is also a long story that all the ancient cultures and all the mythological stories tell us. That for each and every individual on this earth, there is a roadmap. And the roadmap is giving you tools to start your journey, to start climbing your mountain. It doesn't give you the tools to reach the top, because the last part of climbing the mountain, you have to do it by yourself. And then it will be from mysterious, we don't know when we find out, and the last climb, last climb, last hundreds of yards towards the summit, that is a magical, because nobody can help you, you have to do it by yourself. In our present westernized capitalistic culture, we sometimes forget to tell that last part of climbing a mountain to children, that we are in the, we have the opinion that the whole, your whole life is potentially predictable and should be predictable. It should be totally lined out already. Well, lining out, and it's not. It's not. It should. It, there should always be something mystical, mythological, and something magical in your life. And that makes life life. Plants, minerals, plants, animals, and humans. Minerals, plants, animals, and humans. I have a dog in the house here. She's sleeping. She's five, six year old. Belongs to a friend of mine. She's, she's in her power of her life in the, and you know what, let's go with a plant. If you see a plant growing, a plant in your garden growing, and it's like a, potentially it's like a tulip. You see this flower coming up. What can the tulip become? It can become the tulip. Can it become something else? Uh -uh. Can it become more than a tulip? Can it become more beautiful than a tulip? Can it become two tulips? No. No, it just can become, it has the potential in the seed to become this tulip. At the, you know, the summit of the life of the tulip. With a dog the same. A young dog, what does a young dog want to become? It wants to become a senior dog or an adult dog. It can run and run and run. Can the, the dog be more than, a, than an adult dog? No, a dog is a dog. A dog, or, a dog of five year old, which is here, or, for, or a 12 year old, is about the same animal. Now, what about humans? What about humans? When we grow up, what can we become? Is there a limit when we climb our mountain? Is there a limit that we can become? Like a tulip can become a tulip, that's it. A dog will become an adult dog, that's it. And we humans, can we become human and that's it? Sometimes we think that, and sometimes we tell it at schools and it's not. We can keep on climbing our mountain. That's the essential mythological, magical and mysterious difference between humans like you and me and the animal kingdom or the mineral kingdom or the plant kingdom. We can keep on growing 50, 60, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years. We can keep on growing. We'll see that in the next subject is that once you have reached the summit of a mountain, you have become financially successful. You have become the mother of a beautiful children. You have raised a family. That's one mountain. You have reached the top of the mountain. Is that the end of life? Oh, we all know it's not. And we'll see that again in 10 minutes. Now there is 
we can continue making new mountains. It's a cyclical part of life. Once we have reached our summit of one mountain, hey, there's another mountain, and there's another mountain, and there's another mountain, and there's another mountain to discover and to climb and to reach that, that summit. Isn't that, doesn't that make life interesting? And also the magical, mystical and myth mythological stories tell us it ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be a walk in the park. You have to do something for it. Yesterday I visited with my friends a factory here in the south southern part of Holland. And the factory is, factory is called Pal V. P-A-L Pal V. Like Victor. And they're making flying cars. This is a real story. Who visited yesterday? It's a, it's a multi-billion company and very, very amazingly good product. What they make it's a car that can fly or an airplane that can drive on the road and it's like a gyrocopter so it has these these uh, gyrocopter uh, um, uh, rotor and it can collapse and it can be stowed in that car seeing is believing and then you can drive it on the highway wherever you want to go so they started doing this 12 years I think about it the first the first seed of the dream 12 years ago and the CEO of the company he said well I have this dream I'm going to do it and they now have a beautiful building they're making these cars they're getting they're getting uh, they start the production next year because now on their climbing their mountain making a drive a flying car nobody has done it in the way they do it a flying car they're climbing their mountain they're climbing the mountain finding all kinds of issues they have to solve, finding a sol finding the solution. And the last part, they have to do it by themselves because this is a unique, a unique concept. So what I want to say with this story is that now it, climbing a mountain, it's not something out of, a, out of a book about a fairy tale. It's actually happening in your life. And we, we sh can embrace this paradigm of climbing a mountain. That's, that's life is all about that. The, get your wings i'm from the world of aviation and if you are if you want to be a pilot you are a pilot already and if you get your you take your flying lessons and you get your license you, you have your legal document that you're legally a fly, uh, allowed to fly an airplane we call that you get your wings you get your physical wings so you can fly operate an airplane well, getting your wings is again to a twofold thing. It's getting your wings. Hey, you can you can rent or buy an airplane with wings, or a helicopter with swinging wings, and go flying by yourself or with your friends or with your family and get fun and get excitement, etc. And also in the non-physical way, getting your wings means an encouragement to start climbing your mountains. In the religious ways, they say, well, the, the ultimate form in one religion that is an ultimate form of living, the, we have, you get angel wings, angel wings, and you can climb above yourself. Isn't that something? I know from musicians, a good friend of mine, he's a very good musician, pianist. And when a musician is in his bliss, in his tune, He's inside the music, totally playing with his hands. He's totally, he's, he is the music. And uh, they all say, well, when I'm in my, in my being of, of creating this music, I feel that I have 10 hands. And that means you're climbing your mountain. You get your wings. No, I've, I flew many airplanes and in total I've been up in the sky for 18,305 hours and that's in total three years and two months I'm being off the ground three years and two months and many times when I talk about well what what is it like being in the air well being in the air for three years and two months is it, it has done something with me which you cannot polish away with so with soap so uh, it, it and if I go back to the belt, to the essence of why was flying, being off the ground, with your feet off the ground, why was that so magical, mystical, 
mythological for me because flying, being off the ground, was for me a, co a, de a, a reminder, a daily reminder that I should always increase my quality of life or find a new mountain to climb. And being in the air is a daily reminder about this, that the essence of living, and for me I say the, effort, the essence of flying is for me the essence of living, is climbing your mountains, is getting your wings, getting your physical wings and also getting your non-physical wings. Somehow that always uh, inspires me to talk about flying and talk about uh, mytholo mythology because mythology gives you magical and mystical tools that will let you unveil, stretch your wings and go flying in a non-physical way. Don't we all want that? Now the the hero's journey, the hero's path, we talked about it before in the previous lectures, is also about climbing your mountain. And the hero's path is uh, very old, as old as mankind, if not older, paradigm about the essence of life, about what type of tools you need to make your life valuable. And in the hero's path, we also say that, well, it's life is like going on a ship, your solo ship. You take off when you get born, you go onto the lake. And if you don't get the right tools, you're on the lake and you don't know where to go to. And there's a big storm and you have no sails, you have no engine, you have nothing to do. You just, you won't go anywhere. And the hero's journey tells you that nature will give you the right tools. It will give you via mythological stories the sails, to raise your sails, in order for you to be dynamic, to, to move into life. It won't tell you where to go, it tell you, you now have the potential to go, to be in dynamics. All the Eastern philosophy says that is, that's a sidestep, that if the, if the spirit, spirit, our spirit gets captured in the body then the spirit wants to escape from this body wants to and that results in a revolt and the revolt of the spirit dealing with the prison that we call body the resulting part of that is life is dynamics because the spirit knows the only way to to unleash my potentials the only way to escape from this prison this physical uh, limitation is to live life to the max is to get whatever there is in life get out of that so the result of this is a re is a revolt of the spirit and that's the result is then life as we know it in your life in our life in my life in the life of all the people that creates dynamics dynamics movement and that's what the universe wants from us 1000 years ago 1000 years ago there was in europe a renaissance a renaissance comes from the french word birth rebirthing about 1000 years ago this story is not very well known into the world it was in the 10th 11th and 12th century that was in the what we now call France, in the southern part of France. And that's very much connected with the stories of the Cathars, Qatar. And the Cathars, there were hundreds of years of not so much development in mankind. And somehow, and it's a long story, I give you the short version of it. Somehow the people, the Qatar, driven by the people that, were, were, that we call now Qatar, they wanted to, to explore the next level of existence. And they started to experiment with uh, what is love? What's the love between men and women? What is the love between God and man? What is music? What is artistic expression? 
So they start to go in a quantum leap towards the next level of existence. And uh, the the and there were there were people that would travel around and making music and we call them troubadour troubadour and if i say now that troubadour is some old guy or girl from a thousand years ago making music and having fun well it's a little bit more than that um troubadour it's two words trouvé and door trouvé means finding and door means gold so they were the gold finders not on the gold they wanted to find gold on the non-physical level so they started to again experiment with instruments making new instruments in order to go to the next level to climb their mountain and to find gold to find golden nuggets for their lives and uh, in this way traveling around in europe for those hundreds of years they helped raise the spirit in europe as the gold finders troubadours they were we come to the conclusion of this lecture, uh, dear listeners, and um, we talked before about the double duty that we have. Now, these things that I tell you here, um, we may or may not understand it, and that's both okay. In our present world, compared to where in my present world, where words like magic, mystical, mythology, are not used on a daily basis it's hard to understand these things if you would be in a culture where these words are used on a daily basis it would be far more difficult so i always say the challenge of today if you if you eat understand my story then the challenge of all of us is that uh, to it that's a, a double double duty because letting the story sink in is one of the duties and we also have the duty of letting it work how can we put it to use in a daily in our daily reality and again there are, there have been many other cultures in the past hundreds of thousands of years where that was only a single duty because just learning or hearing or listening getting the music from the troubadour or hearing the stories it would happen by magic because the whole culture would be based upon mytholo mytho myth mystical, magical and mythological stories. So now we have the double duty to reincorporate it in our lives, which I found very exciting to do. So um, there is there is a uh, payback time by nature. Nature can give you something and if I tell you the following, hopefully it will resonate with your life. Climbing your mountain, including the last part of that mountain, where, the, um, where you have to do it by yourself, you are delivering an effort. And if you deliver an effort, we know it when you do sport. If you go do something high energy sporting afterwards, you feel damn good. You feel very good. So nature has built in in our system that if you deliver an effort, a physical or a non-physical effort, you get a reward, you get golden nuggets. The, the troubadour will give you to give you a good feeling, to give you some sort of a reward, to give you joy, to give you excitement, to give you fun. So isn't that beautiful how nature is built like this? Let me conclude with the last thing I want to tell you about uh, the pyramids. Yes, there's Hans again with the story of the pyramids. Now. Envision a pyramid for you. You see a pyramid, you see these pyramids? There are more than 100 in Egypt and uh, globally there are thousands of them. They are all over the place. Um, one of the highest is in Bosnia in Europe and there are many under the sea near Japan. And you see the pyramid, four sides. And Now bear with me, you're a young age. And young age means that you are walking around the sides of the pyramids. They are north, east, north, south, east, west orientated. Well, can you look north and south at the same time when you're around the pyramid? Uh, no, no, I walked around them many times. Here I can watch 
the, to the north and I have to walk around it, which takes me 10 minutes, get that big. Then I go, go look to the south. So I cannot, and this is a metaphorical way, I cannot see all aspects of life when there, I'm, I'm in the beginning of my life. You cannot see perspective when you're in the beginning of your life. You cannot see far away. You cannot see a long distance horizon far away in the beginning of your life. Now, when you start growing in your life, you get a little bit older, you go to the next level of your mountains and you grow and you go to the next level on the pyramid. You go higher in the pyramids, 10, 20, 30 meters high. Well, you get a little bit more sight. You get a little bit perspective, more perspective on life. You see further past the horizon, the higher you get. Now, where's the point where you can see everything? North, East, South, West. Optimum, as far as you want. That's in the top of the pyramid. So that's also the metaphorical, symbolical meaning of the pyramid. Is again the encouragement to climb your pyramid, to climb your mountain and go to the top. Because that is where Oros is, the all-seeing eye. And there you see, and we, you probably realize that, you recognize that in your life, that you need sometimes years and years and years to understand things. So there's the pyramid. When you're in the top of the pyramid, the all-seeing eye is there. And you can see all aspect, north, east, south, west, in the same sphere, far away. And that is your pyramid. If you look at the pyramid from above, you see a point and you see a triangle, you see a square. If you look to the side of a pyramid, you see the triangle. And the triangle is a well, very well known magical, mystical, uh, mythological aspect. We, we know it from the, the movie The Matrix, Trinity. We had uh, Trinity, we had Neo. And we had uh, the, uh, the third one, uh, got the name, the, um, or, uh, the I forgot the, th the third person. So it's, it's a three-sided thing. And in, I know in the Catholic religion they say uh, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is a trilogy. So the pyramid, the three sides three the triangle the pyramid reminds us of uh, of that morpheus morpheus trinity and neo three sided so to the, to the conclusion we are made you and i we are made to climb our mountain and climbing of your mountain if you do it in the right way using the right tools that you get from nature then you will understand and find out that the last part of every of the mountain you climb, you have to do it by yourself. And we learned that there are once you have climbed the mountain, you've reached the summit. There are more mountains coming up. And we have learned now that uh, we have a double duty: that is, to understanding these type of stories and to to use our creativity to reapply it in our lives. I love fire. It's wood burning, giving warmth, heat. Thank you for watching. Next week, the next lecture, next level lecture, Hans the Storyteller Nordic. I'll be back.